time touches all more gently here, here where man has said no, trees and grass and flowers will remain, where the firstborn sometimes sees his father's father's eyes reflected in the shallow pool, feels an ancient heart in the palm of his hand, and seeking comfort, seeking shade, lies beneath the boldly film watching swan boats glide in season. This day never gets easier. Um, it just never gets easier. And coming here today, um, I was looking at the, the sibling tree. We planted it three years ago. And as I was standing here, as John was speaking and Candy was speaking, I was looking at the tree grow and looking at the children uh, who lost your parents on that day and watching you grow and wanting you to understand that your city and your state are behind you every single day. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam God bless America my home sweet home God bless America
15 years ago, one of the stories that came out of 9-11 was the story about the man with the red bandana. He was a kid, he was in his 20s, he was from Nyack, New York, and he went to Boston College and he played lacrosse. His father was a banker, but he was also a volunteer firefighter. And he grew up spending a lot of time around the firehouse in Nyack with his dad. Did very well in school, graduated, went to work for a big finance institution that had its offices in the World Trade Center. And on 9-11, the, the first plane that shared the South Tower shared the tower literally two floors away from where his office was. And amidst the chaos and the darkness and the smoke and the fire and everything else that was taking place at that time, he was one of the few people whose immediate reaction to all this was to find the stairway and to try to help other people, many of whom were trying to get out on the elevators, which of course didn't work, find their way to the stairways as well. Now all of what I'm about to tell you, nobody knew about until five or six months after 9-11, as the story started to come out from some of the survivors about how it was they found their way to the stairway and made their way down amidst the smoke and the darkness and the chaos of the moment. And it turned out that this young man, Wells Crowther, found the stairway on one side of the building and began basically escorting, cajoling, and shouting people into that stairway and then helping them get down to the bottom. And it's pretty clear, based on all the conversations that people have with the people who survived all this, that he did this a lot over the course of the next several hours. But nobody knew what really happened to him until some of these stories started to come out. All they knew was that he was found at the bottom of the South Tower in the lobby. In the same area, they found the remains of a number of both the leaders and the, and the members of the FDNY. It turned out that several months before that, Wells had actually submitted an application to the FDNY to become a firefighter, which shouldn't have come as a surprise to anybody who saw what he did that day. Because like many members of the fire department who had plenty of opportunities to get out of the building, he didn't. He stayed in the building, continued to go up and down the stairs, and do everything he could to help people find their way out. The same way so many members of the Fire Department of New York did the same thing.